So what I'm hitting on tonight is one of my favorite things to do, and that is doing in the hoop tile scenes. You can see behind me on the wall, I have four blocks made of Anita Good Designs Golden Tapestry, and I'm making the largest size, which means each block is approximately seven and a half by 11 and a half inches. And I'm going to show you how, what type of stabilizer I use for hooping and all that fun stuff tonight. But the first thing I'm going to talk about tonight is this, this stabilizer here. So I pre-cut, after I attached my stabilizer, and this is actually more like an interfacing to my silk. This is Dupiani silk in navy blue. But you can see what it looks like. I fused it onto the back of the silk and it's called weft, ultra weft. And what that does, it's still super soft and drapeable. You can see that, it's not stiff, doesn't make it stiff, but it adds a higher thread count and it strengthens, it strengthens lightweight fabrics and knits so that you can embroidery on them, okay? What the particular brand that I have for this that I'm using right now is Pellin, right here, Pellin, and it is called Ultra Weft Natural, and the number on it is 860F, okay? This is a 15-yard bolt, and it's 20 inches wide. And what I, I do, I apply it to the width of a fabric, and then I cut up the fabric after it's applied to the size squares that I want. Whew, that was a mouthful. But <clears throat> we're gonna, I'm actually going to show you step by step how I get this going tonight. And the other stabilizer I use for this is No Show Mesh. I have 15 inch wide No Show Mesh. Okay. But I'm going to show you how to economize, how to make this go further than normal. Because I have to have two sheets of this for one hooping. So for that size, that I, since I do not have an 8x12 hoop, I have one ordered though, I'm using the 9.5 by 14 inch hoop for these blocks. Here's one that is complete right here. I just took it out. That's block number five. We're going to work on block number six tonight. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to hoop our fabric, okay? So I'm going to angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. You see, right into my coffee cup that way, too. <laughs> There's no, you don't have to use any of the cameras or projectors or positioning. The, these designs are pre done off of a CD. So it doesn't matter, any machine you use, the technique would be exactly the same. So there's one sheet of my no-show mesh on my hoop, okay? There we go. And I'm going to put the second sheet down. Now why I'm using two is because everything else is going to get floated on top of this. And I'm following the Anita Good Design directions to the letter on this. It's re they're really turning out nice and neat. And now I'm going to put in the inner hoop. There we go. And specifically, you really don't want to use a magnetic hoop, like a dime monster hoop for this. Just because you don't want anything slipping during the process because for these to fit together, this tie, these tile scenes, you want them to not shift anywhere. So all I'm doing, I'm just tightening it up. I'm just finger tightening, finger tightening this right here. And the way I can check, if I pull up on it and shake it and it doesn't come apart, it's tight enough. So I'm going to go to my embroidery screen, and my next design number is tile number six. I 
just finished tile number five about midnight last night. And I have these, I have the, the, I have a USB stick attached into my machine over here. So I'm gonna touch the pocket and I'm gonna touch that first USB. There it says golden tapestry. Now it's reading off the USB stick. Design files, A size, that's the largest. And then PES. And I want number six. Right there. Now, for whatever reason, it's showing these as on the stick as being in a horizontal format. So all you do, if you get this message, pattern extends to the outside, blah, blah, blah. Rotate the pattern combination. So I'm just going to touch that 90 degree. It straightens it up, and then I hit the set button. And that is what I'm going to stitch out next. You see the one I just did to make sure I'm not duplicating one, and I'm not. Okay, so that is number six. And you can see up here it's 11.77 by 7.37. So if you had the 8 by 12 hoop, that would be the perfect size hoop for this. But anyway, so to, for stabilizer for the 9.5 by 14 inch hoop, you really need 15 inch wide stabilizer. So now I'm just going to attach my hoop. I already have the machine threaded. I have a pre-wound bobbin in. Oh, let me just talk about that for a moment. So if you're wondering... I'm just going to pull that up. I have the size L pre-wound. It's not a class 15. So inside my embroidery, my, oh shoot far, my bobbin thing here, I have, where's my tweeze? There they are. I have this little dude. This is an adapter you can put in your bobbin case to put these narrow bobbins in, okay? I have the regular uh, bobbin case in. I do not have the embroidery bobbin case in. I tried the embroidery bobbin case, the one with the purple dot, and guess what? Its tension was way too tight, so I swapped back to the regular, and now it's stitching out just fine. Okay. Here we go. Let's get that rethreaded in there. And I use black. Because I have white, one reason is my fabric's really dark. The other reason is with the white stabilizer on the back, I want to be able to see what's called the squaring stitch. So after I have this done and I take it out, check out the back of it, what I will do, and I'm going to do this on camera here in a little while, I'm going to use my rotary cutter and ruler and cut a half inch away from the outside, the outermost line of stitching, which is called the squaring stitch. That's how you set the tiles together. So we're all set. I have Madeira rayon, navy blue thread in, and I am going to attach my hoop. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. And next, I'm going to go to the stitch out screen. And then I'm just going to press the start button and it's going to stitch out the squaring stitch. Everything inside of this box will be visible on the front of the piece. When you sew all the squares together, everything inside of this is what will be visible on the front of the little quilt tapestry. Okay. And what this is for, this is to position, this is also acts as a positioning stitch for my quilt batting. I pre-cut me some pieces of batting and I'm just cutting up batting scraps from my long arm. So it's not like I'm opening a package of batting, which you could do and cut it up. These are actually scraps from my long arm that I have accumulated. <laughs> and I save them just for stuff like this. So that first step is done. And don't pay any attention to the different colors over here on the screen. 
They're, each step is a different color because that tells the machine to stop between each step. If those are all the same color, it just stitch them all out without stopping a bit. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to put my batting in. I just want to make sure it's all covering up that line, so just the box that just stitched down. Because after this step, I'm going to take out the hoop and I'm going to trim it with a duckbill scissors right up to the stitch line it's going to do next. So we're just going to be have our batting in. I'm just going to smooth it out. Don't have to tape it down or anything. I'm just press the start button. <coughs> Excuse me. And now it's basting down my batting to my project here. And I tell you, I hadn't used my duckbill scissors for a, rot, for a while. It only took me two hours of searching to find them, but I finally did find them. <laughs> So Alexis, this box of pre-wounds are nebs. I have had them forever. I have had them forever and <clears throat> any box, any brand will do as far as that goes. Oh, wonderful, Bertie. I will see you in November. Absolutely. I'm so excited to be coming back to Denver in November for Above and Beyond Sewing. So there, I just finished that step. Okay, now you can see I have this beautiful box. It's all sewn down. It went over it twice. Now I'm going to remove my hoop. Okay, and I'm going to come over here to my little table. And I'm going to swap the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. Right there. Okay, now you can see, you get a good look here. You can see what's happened so far. So, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to trim off all this excess batting right close to the stitch line by using these. These are called, some people call them applique scissors. I've always heard them referred to as duckbill. Either terminology is correct. So what happens, you see that this big spoon piece that goes underneath. This part goes on top, and you'll see here. And what it does, this ridge right here will come up real close underneath to where I stitch down, and we'll be able to trim it super duper close. So check it out. I'm just gonna get up close to this corner here. See how I'm, hol I'm holding it straight up. I'm just going to take my little snips as I go. Now I'm going to go all the way around it. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it. I'm just going to keep going all the way around. Nice and easy. And I save these little scraps of batting here just to use um, for like stuffing to stuff a dog bed or or whatever or craft project. I really like to save these uh, to make dog and cat beds for the animal shelters. There we go. One more cut. There. Easy peasy. But that's what that's what these type of scissors are used for. Now if I'd done this if I was applique, I would do the same thing with excess fabric around an applique, just to trim it real close to the tack down stitch on applique. But as you can see here, I'm gonna hold this up so you can get a better look. 
and you can see you can see now both lines of the stitching the outside line is what is where I will actually stitch just inside of the outside line over here to attach the blocks together okay so now I'm going to insert this back in the hoop no nope. first though no I'm not first I'm going to take my piece of silk with the weft fused on back and I'm going to center this <clears throat> And normally I cut this a little bit bigger than I did for this piece. So I'm actually going to use embroidery tape to hold it in place because I, got, I cut it a little too close. And I'm just going to put that down right there and then one right down here at the bottom. I'm just overlapping it about a quarter of an inch. It will not stitch through. And you can reuse that embroidery tape over and over again until it loses its stickiness. I'm just going to smooth it, and that's all. It's floating. And now I'm going to put it back in the machine, and it's going to it's going to do a tack down stitch to hold it in place. And this time it will do it right on top of that squaring stitch. There we go. Let me move my camera. There we go. Okay. Oops. Come up and over just a bit. There we go. Okay. So, now we're ready for that step. And all I'm going to do is press the start and stop button. It's now going to tack it down in place. So it'll hold it in place. This is... This is... When you hear the term floating, if you're new to embroidery, this is what you do to how is one way to float fabric and batting without having it actually onto fastened inside of the hoop. So as you can see here, <clears throat> there's stippling all down on this side, and it's going to do a lot of embroidery over here, as you can see on this screen. It just stippled all of that. Now, I'm going to move my camera over. Maybe you can get a little better look at it while it's in the hoop there. And there you go. Now you can see all the beautiful stippling on the silk. The needles I am using for this are <clears throat> Class A embroidery machine needles, titanium, size 8012. That's what's been working well for me for this. Now that that's all set, it is actually ready to go. And I am going to get it started. And we're going to let it run. And this is block number six. There are 32 total blocks for this portion. And then for the border, there are, let's see, 8, maybe 16, 24. There are 20, 28 units to do just for the border. Here's the one I'm going to trim here in just a moment. This is block number five, but check out the metallic thread. I only had to rethread this once. And then another time, simply because I ran out of bobbin thread. Okay, but check it out. Isn't it beautiful? Look at the shine to it. I can see it's hitting the light on the camera just a little bit now. It has, definitely has a shine to it. It's really beautiful. So we're going to let that do its thing. It's got about a 43 minute stitch out. I'm going to swap over to the other camera for a moment. And we'll check back on it. Next, we are going to trim. I'm going to show you how to trim one of these because regardless of which tile scene you might be doing, the trimming is pretty much the same all the way throughout. Okay? You see I have a bunch of excess, but it's okay because I will reuse this. And once I get this cut out, I'm going to go over to the Altair and show you 
how I how I re reuse the excess that I cut off. None of this will go to waste. I am a very frugal person when it comes to stabilizer, because we all know stabilizer is not an inexpensive thing to purchase. All I'm going to do is take my my ro my ruler. And I'm going to line up the half inch markings on this outside black line right here. See that outmost line that frames the entire thing? That's called the squaring stitch. And I'm just going to place my ruler right on top of it. I'm going to line it up, the markings from corner to corner. And then I'm just going to cut all the way across. Okay, here we go. Now, see this? That trimming, those two trimmings? I'm going to show you in a minute what, I, what I'm going to do with that. And now I'm going to rotate it around and do the same thing on this, this end. Here we go. There's that one. Now I have four pieces that are exactly the same same width. And now when I trim these long sides, I'll get four more pieces that are a slightly different length, and that's okay. Half an inch. Make sure those markings line up. Okay, right there. I have me a little bit of some pretty fun silk strips that I can use on something. Now I'm going to turn it one more time. And trim this one. There we go. Okay. So that one is all trimmed. And now it is ready for the design wall. But check it out, if you ever have something that's really puckery, float it on top of no-show mesh and you, that should eliminate the, pu the puckers. I use the no-show mesh more than any other type of stabilizer that's on the market. It's my favorite. It's my go-to stabilizer. This is one of my favorite Anita's. Um, this is the second one of these I've made. The first one, you've seen that one. I did it on felt and it was the smaller one. When complete, this largest one will have over 2.4 million stitches in it. <laughs> yes, 2.4 million plus. <laughs> There's what I'm making. There are the first five blocks. I have them set out on my design wall the, as to how they'll be sewn together.